Wind is the lifeblood of our biosphere. It transports heat and water around in such a way that determines climate, plays a role in ecology, and sets up dangerous storms and natural disasters. But think about it for a second. Where does wind come from? Well, wind is a result of the Earth's uneven heating. Say one area is really hot and another is cold, compared to their shared surroundings. Wind will travel from cold to hot. Why? Let's take it step by step. The difference in temperature we see here will yield a difference in air pressure, and thus diffusion of air particles, or wind. The hot area will become low pressure, because the heated air parcel expands and becomes lighter or less dense. The cold area will become high pressure, because the cooled air parcel contracts, becoming heavier or more dense. It's like if you measure your weight on a scale. The more massive and dense you are, the more pressure you exert, and vice versa. Anyway, the low pressure hot air then rises like a balloon, because the dense air below it pushes it upwards, and the cold air sinks like a rock, because the lighter air below it can't hold it up. Where is the wind? Well, wind travels from high to low pressure because of diffusion. Particles in either area are hitting and ricocheting off each other constantly, but the low pressure particles have much more space in between them. This attracts high pressure particles because they have high chances of being pushed into the open spaces and staying there. This transfer of air from high to low pressure creates the effect of wind. So we've established we have wind on the surface, but that's not the whole picture, because above we have another pressure difference. The rising air will stop rising at a certain point once it reaches an altitude when the air around it is the same pressure. This leads to a buildup of air, or a high pressure area. Meanwhile, the air at that same altitude above the cold air is losing air as particles sink. This means low pressure. Thus, we see more diffusion and wind above in the reverse of what occurs below. The cycle of wind we see here is known as convection. It applies in many scenarios like sea and land breezes, mountain and valley breezes, thunderstorms, and most importantly, the global wind circulation system. The circulation system is known as the three cell model because it features three donut shaped convection currents or cells in each hemisphere, the polar cell, the feral cell, and the Hadley cell. But wait a burger flip in second. From what we learned about convection, this shouldn't be the case. We have the really hot equator and the really cold poles on either end of the earth. Shouldn't there only be one big convection current, a one cell model? Ha, <laughs> nope. That would only be the case if the earth didn't spin. Why? Well, a rotating earth means different points on the earth's surface spin at different speeds. This can be proven with simple math. Compare latitude lines near the equator and near the poles. The ones near the equator are much longer, but both latitudes take the same amount of time to make a full rotation, 24 hours. Speed equals distance divided by time. Since the length of a latitude line increases as one approaches the equator, and the time needed to rotate is constant, then speed of the surface must also increase as one approaches the equator. The differences in surface speeds make winds curve from the reference frame of the Earth. Specifically, winds moving towards the equator curve opposite the direction that the Earth spins, and those moving towards the poles curve with the Earth. In the former scenario, the surface below the wind spins faster and faster, making the wind fall behind its ideal course. In the latter, the surface below the wind spins slower as it approaches the poles. The wind starts off with a strong momentum in the Earth's rotational direction that stays with it as it goes above slower moving surfaces. This momentum makes the wind go ahead of its ideal path. So now we've established that winds curve. This phenomenon is known as the Coriolis effect, and we could see it at play when we put the one cell model to the test. Wind traveling from the high pressure poles to the low pressure equator curve enough to stop short at 60 degrees latitude north and south. The poles are 90 degrees north and south, and the equator is zero, by the way. Anyway, once the air reaches 60, it gains enough heat to rise, finishing off our polar cell convection. We now have rising air at 60 degrees latitude north and south and at the equator. As the air at these three latitudes reaches its limit in the atmosphere, it will create high pressure areas at high altitudes. The air there will spread out and rush towards the relatively low pressure area in between because of diffusion. These winds will clash at about 30 degrees latitude and bunch together to become high pressure. This creates a column of sinking air at 30 degrees and finishes off our feral and Hadley cells. We can now bend the surface winds according to our knowledge of the Coriolis effect when we have our three cell model. While it may seem complex, what is shown here is most certainly not the full picture. There are all the small scale convection currents I mentioned, and there are tons of storm systems and high and low pressure areas that mess up and contradict this model all the time. Nevertheless, it explains a lot. It shows why almost all deserts are located at 30 degrees and not near the equator, because the high pressure sinking air there stops or at least slows the water cycle. It shows why the doldrums, an area of the ocean with almost no wind, is located near the equator, because the air there rises. It explains how hurricanes are formed, when winds diffusing towards a low pressure area are deflected due to the Coriolis effect. I can go on like this forever, but in any case, the three cell model is a very important part of our lives. It is the basis of climate, the king of all breezes, akin to a complex, gigantic organism whose bodily function is to fan the earth. I mean, it does have cells.